Good afternoon, everyone. It's really nice to be with you all. Thank you very much to the Peace Alliance Winnipeg for inviting me and sharing a panel with Radhika and with Eve. I'm speaking to you today from the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the, one, the Anishinaabeg, and the neutral peoples of the Grand River here in Waterloo. And I'm so glad that we're having this important conversation about uh, the new Cold War. In my 15 minutes, I would like to talk about this dangerous new initiative called NATO 2030 and military spending and how it's contributing to this new Cold War. And then I'd like to end with talking about what uh, things the peace movement in, is doing in Canada to re, to resist this, and how we might um, how you might get involved, and what more we we can do. So I'm going to share my slides with you. I'm just going to hit share here. Um, can everyone see my slides? Okay, great. So one of the main drivers of this new Cold War is NATO, as Radhika mentioned. And last June, the NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg announced this new campaign called NATO 2030. And then five months later, NATO released an expert group's reflection report called NATO 2030 United for a New Era. And then in December, just a couple of months ago, NATO uh, rolled out this big public relations campaign that you can see on social media, hashtag NATO 2030, making a strong alliance even stronger. This uh, massive social media campaign, hashtag NATO 2030, builds on an earlier campaign that was started by NATO a couple of years ago called uh, hashtag we are NATO. So if you follow social media, uh, NATO, the Canadian government, you'll see these tags a lot. And this is very much uh, a propaganda campaign. So uh, let's look a little bit at this, at this report that just came out. I'm showing you here the table of contents. So this report and this initiative, NATO 2030, will be the main point of discussion at the next NATO summit that's expected to take place in Brussels in August. It's a 67 page report that has uh, you know, analysis and recommendations and it identifies 13 uh, threats and challenges. Um, it's, a, it's a dangerous expansion project for the Alliance. Um, its uh, main objective is to build the Alliance's military strength and political solidarity and to expand it geographically. You can see here the two major targets are Russia and China, and it very much inflates you know, the threat against these two countries. Consider the fact that right now, Canada is leading a NATO battle group in Latvia. We also have Canadian fighter jets in Romania that are, you know, this, they're right along um, Russia's borders. We also have uh, Canadian warships in the Mediterranean and in the Black Sea. All of this is part of a NATO operation called Operation Reassurance, but it's very much provocative to Russia. NATO 2030 also maintains NATO's dangerous uh, nuclear deterrence and it discusses new growth in artificial intelligence and cyber warfare and it talks about something uh, called you know threats from the south and this is very much NATO's racist con concern about refugees fleeing Africa and and the Middle East, and there's no acknowledgement in this report, in this initiative about how NATO's wars in Syria, in, in, um, in, Iraq, in Iraq, in uh, Afghanistan, and in Libya, how they've contributed to, uh, you know, to people fleeing these countries. Uh, just this past Wednesday, there were another 41 migrants who drowned in the Mediterranean uh, fleeing conflict-stricken Libya. Um, as you'll remember, you know, it was, it was Canada as part of the NATO operation. Canada led the NATO operation um, of, of bombing Libya that totally destabilized the, the country. So this shipwreck this past um, 
this past Wednesday is just one of many this, you know, over this past decade. I mean, just in this year alone, there's been 118 migrants who've died in the Mediterranean, you know, fleeing North Africa. And over this past decade, there have been 17,000 people who've drowned in the Mediterranean, you know, trying desperately to get to Europe. You know, Canada is complicit in this. Um, so, um, um, NATO is, uh, you know, very much uh, a fundamentally a violent, racist, white supremacist organization. Um, in this, in this, um, in this NATO 2030 initiative, it also talks about something called an open door policy. So they're really trying to bring in the Ukraine, Georgia, and Bosnia into this alliance, and this is, you know, extremely provocative to Russia. To Russia, I want to show you this tweet that uh, the Canadian. Um, mission in, in at, at NATO uh, released on February 17th, and they say Canada supports the Secretary General's efforts to keep the alliance strong militarily, to make it stronger politically, and to make it global. And you can see the hashtags uh, NATO 2030. And if you follow this Twitter account, Canada's Twitter account, you'll see you'll see uh, we are NATO all the time. And then two days later, this. Uh, this is the news from Biden's speech at the Munich Security Conference, very much a NATO uh, conference where he said that U.S. support of the alliance is unshakable. And you might have also heard the news this week that there was a, a Twitter bound announced against some some Twitter accounts that are undermining faith in, in NATO. So this is, you know, this is really ex extremely, uh, extremely troubling. Now, another important important point in this NATO 2030 initiative is pushing members to increase their military spending. You might remember that in 2014 at the NATO summit in Wales, all the NATO members agreed to increase their military spending to 2% of GDP. And about three or four times a year, the alliance members will will give their military spending report to NATO. And this defense expenditure report is available on the NATO website and, and you can see it. And this is what Canada submitted for 2020. And you can see, you know, our military spending is uh, uh, $29 billion. And at this level of spending, it is 1.3, 1.4% of GDP. If we increase military spending to meet that 2% GDP target, we're gonna be looking at spending about $45 billion on our military every year. It's, it's, it's just, it, it's absolutely crazy. And the reason why, why NATO wants us to spend so much money, you know, NATO is led, is dominated and dictated by the United States. The United States wants its, its allies to, to buy its weapons. Um, and 20% of our military spending is supposed to be for buying new equipment. This is why, you know, Canada is spending, um, you know, upwards of, of, you know, $77 billion to buy a new fleet of fighter jets, why we're building new warships um, at a cost of $77 billion, as the Parliamentary Budget Office uh, just announced this week. So I want to show you... Um, uh, uh, this slide here, this shows, um, this is from NATO's defense expenditure report, it shows that Canada, you know, is only about 1.4% of GDP. But if you were lo to look at a cash basis, at $29 billion of spending, Canada is ranked sixth highest among all NATO members, and Canada is ranked 14th highest in the world for military spending. So don't believe ever that Canada is not spending enough on its military spending. We're spending too much, and we absolutely need to re reduce military spending and reallocate it to our urgent environmental and social needs. Um, and I just want to show you this slide very uh, quickly. Um, there is a difference between how Canada reports military spending to NATO and how it reports military spending to the pub to public accounts. So um, you can see this this graph that I prepared using the public accounts showing military spending over the past 20 years at about 30 you know billion dollars compared to how much we spend on the Department of Environment and Climate Change. You know at 1.8 billion dollars. I mean it's so little. Um, what we spend for global affairs, you know, on diplomacy is only about 2.6 billion dollars. So 
so really our foreign policy and our posture to the world is a military posture. Um, uh, you might have also heard that um, last month the, um, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons came into force. There were huge celebrations around the world. Um, Canada is not joining this treaty to ban the worst weapons of mass destruction because of our membership in NATO. NATO has you know, a nuclear uh, deterrence as its you know, central capability. So if, you know, if we want Canada to get in to the TPNW, this new treaty, we're going to have to get out of NATO. Um, so now I would like to uh, um, talk a little bit about how about why it's so critical for us to raise public opposition and uh, political opposition and public opposition to NATO because um, if we don't if we don't stop this NATO 2030 initiative we are going to be trapped trapped forever into this to, into this Cold War militarism. Um, NATO 2030 is going to prevent us from achieving the uh, Paris Agreement targets by 2030. NATO 2030 is going to prevent us from achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Um, and I am very concerned about the fact that many progressives and peace activists will not be honest about this, will not speak out against uh, NATO. So I'm showing you the Canadian NATO Parliamentary uh, Association. Um, most of our parliamentarians and senators are, our parliamentarians are involved in this, in this committee. So um, the, the NDP uh, supports NATO. Uh, 30 years ago, the NDP had some, had some courage to speak out on NATO, but it doesn't now. The uh, Green Party is more ambivalent about NATO. Elizabeth May said, you know, we should question our, our relationship in NATO, but th they've never passed a resolution against NATO. Um, the NDP foreign affairs critic Heather McPherson is a member of this parliamentary uh, committee for NATO, and there are many, uh, you know, so-called progressive senators like um, Kim Pate and um, uh, Mary Lou McFredrin that are also part of this uh, Canadian NATO parliamentary association, and we have to get them get them out of this. We need to start working to uh, dismantle to support uh, for dismantle the architecture of support for NATO. Um, so I, I would also uh, like, I would like to close by telling you how we're trying to resist this. So I'm very proud of the fact that uh, a few years ago, the Canadian Voice of Women for Peace, I'm a member of this organization, we launched a campaign, Feminist Against Militarism, uh, Women Say No to NATO. Uh, during NATO's 75th anniversary in 2019, we protested outside of the the um, NATO Association of Canada's office in Toronto every single month, you know, trying to raise public opposition to the alliance. Um, for uh, we, the Canadian Voice of Women for Peace is part of this this really great organization called uh, No to War, No to NATO. I encourage you to check out the website and, and to get involved. N no to NATO and the Canadian Voice of Women uh, for Peace. We're having a you know a fantastic talk by Ray Atchison. She wrote this. She wrote a chapter in a report put out by NATO Watch um, that criticizes this NATO 2030 initiative. And her chapter is entitled um, "NATO and the Patriarchy." Patriarchy, and she's going to be speaking about uh, NATO and the patriarchy on on a webinar on Sunday, uh, March seventh for International Women's Day at two o'clock, and I encourage you to check it out. Um, the Canadian peace movement is really, has been really trying to rebuild over this, um, over this past year. We have a new listserv, the Canada Peace uh, Network. We have been working hard to try to uh, stop the big uh, CANSEC arms show in Ottawa. We had a big demonstration in 2019. Um, it was, it, 
CANSEC didn't happen this past year, but it's expected to happen virtually this year. So we're trying to, uh, to create a resistance. We are also trying to stop the fighter jets. You know, it's very much because of NATO that Canada is buying, you know, new fighter jets, building warships, going to be buying new attack helicopters and armed drones, etc. This is why resistance to NATO is so critical. Um, so I really encourage you to, to get involved and help us stop this purchase of the new fighter jets. We have about a year to do it because the federal government has said that they're going to you know, pick the new fighter jet sometime next year. And I'm happy to talk more about it during the Q&A. Um, uh, uh, but I'll, I'll close by telling you about uh, an event that we're going to be having in April to try to, you know, to stop these new fighter jets because we see this as a way to have a bigger conversation and to grow a bigger resistance against NATO and against militarism and military spending. We're going to be having this fast for peace, fast against the, the fighter jets. So we encourage you to uh, to join us. You, you don't necessarily have to do a fast, but you could do a meditation or you could do, you know, candlelight ceremony or a walk or a demonstration or something. But please help us stop the fighter jets because it will also help us to get Canada out of NATO to help abolish the alliance. Um, I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thank you very much.